Mornings of Presley with What's Up Southwest Florida. And I want to thank y'all again for coming. We do social media marketing services for locally bus local business owners in Southwest Florida. So tonight we're going to talk about effective social media marketing. So we're going to talk a little bit about marketing in general so you understand marketing. Then we're going to talk a little bit about effective, I mean, social media marketing itself. And then we're going to talk about being effective at it. Because what I've kind of noticed, I don't know if you guys noticed it, a lot of people put stuff out on, on Facebook and Twitter and all the other social media outlets, but they don't really quite know what works, what doesn't work. So that's what we're going to be talking about. So marketing, I want you to think of marketing like this. If you were a big company, you would have an accounting department, you would have a marketing department, you would have a sales department, you might have a customer service department, you'd have a PR department. Big companies kind of do all that. If you notice, most companies, marketing and sales are two entirely different departments. And what happens with small businesses, you wind up wearing all these hats. So when you're marketing, you're kind of thinking you're doing sales but you're not. If marketing is done right, it is paving the way for your sales department. Now, does that kind of make sense? Now think about big businesses that you do business with. Chances are the reason you're doing business with them is because you know them. On some level, you feel like you know them. Everybody knows Walmart, right? Everybody knows Kmart, Target. You kind of know those stores, you know what to expect. You know what you like about them, you know what you don't like about them. But when you're a small business, you're not branded like that yet. So people don't know you. And that's where the marketing comes in. People do business with who? People they know and trust. They know, like, and trust. And that includes the, uh, the bigger businesses. On some level, there's a trust level there. When you walk into a chain restaurant, you pretty much know what you're going to expect, right? But you walk into a local mom and pop, you don't know unless you've been there before. Or somebody has told you about it. Right? So that's what social media marketing does. It paves the way for your sales. Now, I'm sure you've heard a lot of businesses talking about uh, on social media how they get all this business off of social media. You've seen that? I mean, well, the reason it's happening is because is they're known already. So they get you all excited and you're like, oh my God, I'm going to jump on this and I'm going to be able to do the same thing they're doing. So you jump on and you start doing stuff and it doesn't happen and you get discouraged. Well, they forgot to tell you that they've been doing it for five, six years and before that they were been in business for 10 years. So when they jumped on social media, they already had a big audience and they just pulled them all in to social media. And then when they opened up a different one, they moved from Facebook to Twitter, they just pulled their people in. Now that's not to say they're not getting new people, but when you already got an audience that you pulled into these things, it's a little easier because people already know you. So think about on Facebook and Twitter or Instagram or any of these other brands that you follow. Why do you follow them? Because you already know them, right? So how many follow Starbucks, Pepsi, Coke, anybody? Oh, good. You just follow local businesses, right? <laughs> but local businesses that are small, and this is the, you know, the direct sales, everybody else, you all can do the same thing, but it takes time. And you have to work, you have to work with your current clients and customers to pull them into your social media. Now, does anybody do that? Okay, you can answer, it's all right, they're not gonna see you on this. <laughs> so how many of you have Facebook pages? Let's start with that. Okay, most of the room has Facebook pages. How many of you have your current clients and customers on there? Ooh, now there's less hands. Now, why is there less hands? Did you think that you want your current people on there? Or were you thinking maybe, excuse me, <clears throat> they already know me. They don't need to be connected. Is that maybe what some of you were thinking? It's possible. Customer service is, uh, is um, an awesome byproduct of social media marketing because you want them talking about
about you when they're not on social media, and you want them talking about you on social media. So that's where the power of all this is, is getting other people to talk about you. Now, I'm gonna give you a perfect example recently, the infamous Starbucks red cup. How many saw that? For those of you that didn't see it, Starbucks changed their coffee cup this year to a completely just plain old red cup. And there were some people that thought it wasn't very Christmassy because there's a war on Christmas and Starbucks was leading the way because they did a plain red cup, forgetting the fact that last year it had snowmen and snowflakes and anything but Christian things on their cup. So anyway, it became this whole social media thing on Facebook, on Twitter. People were talking about it. They were chiming in with their opinion. Now, Starbucks came back and offered people a buy one, get one, or some kind of discount for coming in. And their sales skyrocketed. That's Starbucks, they can do that. You put a sale out there, you're gonna be very lucky if one person takes advantage of it. And why it is, is because they pulled their customers and clients in, who then pulled their, their friends in because they see something of value in what you offer. But in order for them to see something of value in what you offer, you have to be talking about that. So how many of you put your sales promotions on? Your Facebook and Twitter. How many of you are educating people as to what it is that you do? How many of you do put funny things out that's related to what you do? Okay, we got some hands up for those that, that are uh, watching this live. Maybe five, seven hands went up for those kind of things. Those are the kind of things you have to do. You have to know your people. And the way you know your people is you watch the results of what you're putting out. Now some people get very discouraged because on their Facebook page they only have 112 people. And out of those 112 people, only six people are seeing it. And they're like, why am I doing this if only six people are seeing it? The thing is, you gotta get those people to share. And that's the key, especially with Facebook. Sharing what you're writing. So, you can share it onto your personal page. And it's really funny, because I do this with my clients, and I'll put it on their business page. Their friends are on both. But I'll share it onto their personal. People never saw it on the business, but they saw it on the personal. Does it really matter? They saw it and they shared it. This area is kind of um, funny. We have a lot of people that just read things and they never comment on anything. And so it kind of gives you the impression, well, nobody's always seeing it. There's no interaction. And then you run into them somewhere and they go, oh my God, that post that you put out the other day was so funny. They didn't share it. They didn't like it. You had no idea they even saw it until they told you. So then you have to tell them, would you please share it? Okay, you notice when I talked about the, we're gonna put this on the Facebook page, I asked you all to share it. You have to ask. Now, probably half of you will, maybe all of you will, doesn't matter. You ask, and the more you ask, the more people will do that. So, you need to ask your customers. We all have fans, right? Y'all in your business have people that really support you. Those are the ones that you need to be asking. And if they didn't see it, say, you know, tell them it's there. Can you please share it when you get a chance? You, they'll get into the habit of doing it. They'll start looking for it. And they'll start helping you grow your business. So, you got to talk about things that people are interested in. You want to entertain them. You want to educate them. You want to post consistently. So, how many of you post every day on your business page? How many of you think you should be doing that? If you have a small audience and you post every day, chances are you're gonna bore them and they're, not, they're gonna lose interest. So if you got a small following, and by small I would say 500 or less, then you might be, you wanna be doing those two to three times a week. You start getting closer to the thousand mark then you might want to up it to four times. And then when you get over the 1,000 mark, then you would start considering five times. And then when you get into the multiple thousands, then you can get into the 
posting more than once a day. Our page, we have over 3,000. I noticed if I post more than once a day routinely, we lose people. I do uh, Amanda's social media marketing. She has over 7,000. If I post routinely twice a day, lose people. Every audience is different, but her audience is saying, we don't want to see that twice a day. Once a day is enough. So I lowered it to the once a day with occasionally, a couple times a week, there's an extra post in there. Not losing anybody. One or two every now and then, you're gonna have that. But that's how you tell if people are interested. There's also Facebook groups. How many of you use Facebook groups? Facebook groups are pretty awesome because most of them let you be very promotional in there. So this is how you do. You put the promotional post on your Facebook business page and then maybe an hour, two hours later, even the next day or two days, you share it into different groups. But this is what I see people doing. They belong to about 200 million groups and they decide they put that promotional post out and they go into five groups and they post the exact same thing in all five groups, all at the same time. And what happens is, I'm seeing that in my news feeds, because I'm in all five of those groups, and I'm seeing it in my news feed. Well, there's gonna be those people that are gonna hit the high post because they don't wanna see five of the same thing. So you gotta strategize. And you have to kind of plan it out ahead of time, what you're gonna say, when you're gonna say it, and when are you gonna share it. So, like with this event, I'll share it every couple of days in a different group. Because what I see happening is, people that I already know from different groups are liking it. So they're seeing it at different times, but they're not seeing it in the same group. Because it's different times of the day, and it's, it's a different message. Because we all have different best parts of our business message, correct? Does anybody know what their business message is? Wow, okay. <laughs> Your business message is that core thing that you want people to know about you. That one thing that makes you different and unique. So I'm gonna give y'all homework. I want you to go home tonight and I want you to write that down. Because it's gonna make you think what makes us different. Because you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of skincare products. There's a lot of health and wellness products. There's a lot of web designers. God knows there's enough realtors. <laughs> you know, financial planners, we have a lot of them in this area. But what makes you different? What sets you apart? Why is somebody going to want to do business with you as opposed to the other person? So you gotta, you gotta show your personality and it's okay to show your personality. Every business has a personality. I sometimes have two clients in the same field. One guy can be a little quirky and off the wall with, another one's a little more serious. So you have to catch that personality. If you know your people are quirky and off the wall and they love humor, give them humor. I do a plumber's one. Every time I put out something funny about a plumber, people go crazy. And you would think plumbing is pretty boring. But you'd be surprised what's out there on plumbing. <laughs> Oh, plumbers crack, plumbers fails. <laughs> you know, so you, you gotta be a little out there. Because, let's face it, you look at your news feeds every day on Facebook, and those of you on Twitter, you look at your Twitter feed every day, there's a lot of chatter going on. And you have to stand out from everybody else. So you can use pictures, that's a good way. But I've noticed since Twitter allowed pictures, it's picture after picture after picture after picture after picture. So now it's up in the game. Now that picture has to stand out from all the other pictures. <laughs> or you go on Instagram. How many are on Instagram? Not too many? Instagram's is totally pictures. That's it. And little videos. I think you get 10 second, 15 second little video clips maybe on Instagram. I happen to like Instagram because I like just looking at pictures. And then I wait and see the one that catches my eyes, which is usually somebody posting a beach scene or something. Catches my eye. How many do Pinterest? That's another one that's totally pictures oriented. I kind of like Pinterest too, because it's a little easier. 
you know, it's not something you have to, like Facebook or Twitter, keep up on so, so much. But it's a good one to have, especially if your product or service is a visual one. But on there, even if it's your business one, you can still show your personality. You can show other, have other boards that relate to things about your business. Because you want to be seen as what? Unique. Unique? What else? An expert? Okay. How many think Starbucks makes really good coffee? Please, raise your hand. How many thinks it's really good coffee? Yeah, I think it's really good coffee. Not, no, I think it, you all thought I meant really bad coffee. coffee. Not many people think Starbucks has really good coffee. How many actually go to Starbucks? Hope I don't get in trouble for picking on them. <laughs> so you go anyway, because why? You know what the experience is. If you look at their Facebook page, they have an awesome Facebook page. They sell their products through sharing, through promoting and marketing the experience. Every single post, even when a new product comes out, is about the experience. And they relate that on an emotional level. And those of you that have heard Manna talk before about sales, you have to get to people on an emotional level. And that's what they do, and they're brilliant at it. Do you really think they need to be doing it? Where's everybody at these days? If you didn't come to an event like this, where would you go to find people to talk to? Where would you find go to find people to get to know who you were? Hello, echo, 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 echo. You go to social media, right? So for smaller businesses, even though it may seem a little harder, you don't need the same size audience as the big chains do. You just need enough of an audience so that those people are talking about you and helping you grow your business. So that's why on Twitter, a lot of local people, you know, two, three hundred followers maybe, you know, you're not going to get a million like some of the movie stars are. But you don't have all that much to say like they do. They actually are geniuses at contriving things to say just to keep a conversation going. And you really don't want to do that if you're a business person, but that's what they do. Look at the television shows. What do they do in the television shows now? They want you on the phone while you're watching the television, tweeting them your opinion about something. Now, why do you think they're doing that? No, oh, they're pulling you into the, into the show. It's a connection. They are connecting with their audience. You can now watch a television show and maybe vote for who the next top model is or who the next top chef is, or whatever those shows do. Um, who is it? American Idol, I think, does that. Don't they give you a chance to call in? Some of them let you tweet as the show's going on. Some of them will even say, tweet during the show, and we may pick your tweet to show during the show. So that's where everything is going. A lot of it's there, and there's new stuff coming out all the time, real-time things are uh, much more popular. How many of you, when you put out a picture of yourself, get a huge reaction? More so than probably anything else. Ever change your profile picture? Watch what happens. Okay, now I'm gonna tell you a secret. We're gonna keep it between us and our Periscope watchers and those on replay. If your page is lagging, your personal page is lagging, change your profile picture. That, and watch what happens. That's a strategy. It can be organic because you just talk with the take a new picture. You know, I did it when I went to Cracker Barrel and put a little crown on my head. I saw that. That's my profile picture. Now, I won't change it until I come up with something other off the wall kind of thing. Carmen. Carmen. Carmen's been there. For a Periscope people, Carmen's our little. It's a cannoli doll that we made. She's kind of our little spokesperson. Huh? <laughs> the, yeah, you know, you didn't see it the other day. My post the other day was uh, 3.30 in the morning. Either Bud or Wiser, one of them, decided that it was going to hop on my head. 3.30 scared the heck out of me. You know, I have a frog on top of your head, 3.30 in the morning. Poor thing, I whacked it too hard. Hit in the closet door. Unfortunately, Bud is no more. 
totally by accident, but I mean, you know, you get startled at that time of the morning. Those are the kind of humorous posts that you can put on your personal. And the reason I'm saying that is, is because most of you are independent business owners. It's you, your one man operation too, maybe if you're lucky. And so you want to capture your personality on your personal page as well, because they're going to do, people are going to want to know who you are and what you do for a business and connecting that way. And then you get them onto your business page. The ones that are, you think, if you're local, you might want to keep them in this area, that type of thing. But there's power in your personal profile. As you saw with the, the Fox stuff and my profile picture and even the logo thing, how many of you actually saw that? You know? So a lot of, great, and I did that because I wanted your feedback. It's also my way of saying, hey, we're changing things. You know, and overwhelmingly, you guys responded well to it. In fact, everybody, I think, responded pretty well to it. So that tells me as a business owner, it's the right logo for us. Of course, my web designer had a fit. <laughs> Don't tell them to do that. But that's what the big businesses do when you think about it. They get people's opinion on things. And don't you like to have a say? Isn't that why you interact with people? Because you want to have a say? You see all the political stuff. I'm watching that and I'm going, man, if we could get businesses to get that kind of response rate, the small business owner, we all would be sitting pretty. Because it's all over the place. You can't scroll through your fees without seeing something about it on one side or the other, one opinion or another. It's educational, gets a little old, but you know, that's the, that's the power of social media. People can voice their opinion. So you as business owners need to do that. Now you can do contests, you can ask their opinion, you can do polls, but the organic, off the top of your head, things that make you laugh and tickle you is probably gonna do the same to your audience. So you gotta listen to your instincts. How many of you follow your guts? Because that's where the answers lie in all of this. I mean, I can give you ideas that, you know, you can do pictures and you can do videos and you can do this and you can do that and you can read everybody else saying, oh, do this, do this, do this. But what it boils down to is, it's a reflection of you as a business owner and you want it to reflect you. And you don't care what anybody else in your business is doing because you're gonna be talking to people who are attracted to what you have to offer based on who you are. So. Do we have any questions so far? Absolutely no questions? So you all got this now, right? You're gonna, you know, yes, Joe. Uh, great to show your personality. It's nice to be unique. But to the point where you wonder, well, I, I, are they gonna hire me because of me as a group call, or are they gonna hire me because I know what I'm doing? I like to show people that I know what I'm doing, but a lot of times they move on more than they're doing. <laughs> well, I, I actually have seen your posts, and I, I and as quirky as they are, you still have good, valuable information in there. You just do it in a goofball kind of way, which suits you. And this, but this brings up something I wanted to talk to you about, Joe. Anyway, you got to remember people's buying cycle. And especially like in your field, your business is something somebody doesn't need every day. They need to know you when they need to use you. So the, the buying cycle is a little different. You know, you want it in their head that when their, your computer goes wrong, that they call you first. That's what you have to go after. And that's really what anybody has to go after. And if you think about the big brands in this area, and I've done this before, so I'm going to do it again. If I was to say Kia, whose um, name pops into your head first? For those in the, that aren't in this area, other parts of the U.S. would recognize Billy Fusillo. He's branded. Now I'm going to really scare you. He's in all y'all's head. And you can't get him out. He's there. If I was to say personal injury lawyer, Morgan and Morgan. 
<laughs> yes, legal shield. <laughs> okay, next month I'll do the same thing. We all say legal shield. <laughs> so here's the thing for those that are in this area. Morgan & Morgan is a huge uh, personal injury lawyer. They're in your head. Now, do you think they care if you ever use them or not? Do they care? Do they ask you what you're going to I care about us. They don't care because they know they are in everybody's head. So they don't care if it's the commercials. They don't care if somebody referred them. They don't care. All they care is, yeah, the money. <laughs> but they, they've got the big bucks to brand that way and they can do it quickly. And they both get it very quickly. So how many of us got a budget like that? So well, let me ask you this question then. How much are you spending on your marketing? Social media or otherwise? And that includes networking. Anybody want to share? All right, let's do it this way. Under $100 a month. How many are doing under $100 a month? How many are doing under $50 a month? How many are doing none at all? <laughs> We didn't get many hands to our uh, Periscope people. We we're not getting many hands risen at all. So I guess y'all are spending more than 100 a month then. There you go. <laughs> right? So you gotta, you gotta plan, you gotta have a budget for that. Because that is gonna pave the way, whether it's networking, or whether it's social media, or whether it's your promotional products, that's all paving the way for sales. So how long do you think this whole process is gonna take you if you're spending under $100 a month? forever <laughs> it's going to be slow it's not going to be as fast as if you had a hundred thousand dollars to spend a month so you have to rely on who and who's your best word of mouth yes <laughs> okay. well, we could tell that tell a funny story about um some of amanda's things that have happened through social media um you have to rely on your current people to talk about you. So again, I say you want them talking outside of social media and you want them talking inside. And in this area, that's the one thing I see not happening. People are not sharing their friends stuff enough because Facebook and Twitter really like it when it gets shared and they're gonna see you as a person of credibility and that people enjoy it and they're gonna show it more. And that's why you do it. Whether you share it in a group, you have your friends share it for you, or you're sharing it onto your personal page. So, if we learned anything tonight, what is it you're going to have people do for you? Share. There you go. <laughs> I don't know if outside the area people struggle with that as well, but that's what I see happening here. Everybody thinks the minute they put a post out, the phone's going to ring off the hook. And that's not going to happen. I've been doing this five years and I wish my phone was ringing off the hook like Me too. <laughs> like Kia gets and uh, personal injury lawyer guy there gets. That would be really nice. We would all be just flourishing. So if everybody has to support everybody else, even if you don't know them that well, if you like what they're saying, share it for them because they'll see that it's been shared. So as, a, as an example, what happens with social media? so you don't get discouraged. When I started Amanda's, she picked up this new client. And he was from England. And I said, oh, what's his name? Let me see if I can find him on Facebook or Twitter because that's where you are. And it turned out that he was on Facebook. He had been following her since pretty much she had started on Facebook. He never commented on a thing. Never liked anything. Never shared anything. Never even knew he was there but he was paying attention. And when he was in need of her service, that's when he contacted her. And that's what you have to remember. It's hitting the right message to the right person at the right time. And that's magic. And you have to just keep at it until that magic happens. And as you do, you notice you'll change your pose. So you make it fun. Make it a challenge to yourself. But the one thing you're not gonna do is what? give up. Don't ever quit it. Because you never know when you're going to hit that right person at the right time. Okay?
Any questions? Yes. I hate doing this to you. You're going to have to follow me. Hi there. <laughs> The, the thing is that you know, all the businesses we have, we're doing, we're doing it because we are very, very good at it. That's why we are doing this. We can be, we can learn anything, but to be really good at something, we, there has to be our passion. We have to spend time on it. That's why I have Mariette. She's, I call her genius because she is beyond guru. She changes with the trend and she's incredible. I, I will tell you something, thanks to Marianne, I have clients all over the world. I have I had 1.2 million views on my blogs last year. I have sent the from 125 countries, sent inspiration messages to 125 countries, and I would not be able to do that simply because it's the time. And for me to be as good at it, I have to put a lot of time in it. I don't have it. So I have this amazing lady, and I will say to you, if you want to move ahead, you need to hire somebody who does something that is their passion and she is the person. Thank you very much. Thank you, Amanda. I appreciate that. I've been following doing Amanda's, actually, yes, she's my first, very first social media client I managed. But I just have a comment. You need to be consistent. Yeah, absolutely. If you don't get your customers right away, you keep coming or you keep showing up, you keep showing your face, sooner or later, if they don't need you, somebody else might. But if, if you're not a fly-by-night, you know, you're here one time and you're not here ever again because you didn't get a customer. You need to be consistent. They yeah. need to know that you're passionate about what you do and that you're going to keep coming back or keep showing up. Marion, yeah. say the story about the shop. Remember the shop that somebody recommended? Oh, you? yeah. Um, have to hear that story. Okay. Um, one of Amanda's uh, referrals that she had gotten, she got this email and this lady, um, I'm going to have to move because it's echoing. This, um, Lady contacted her through email because her son was very ill. And they had gone to a health food store trying to look for some health food supplements that would help him offset his chemo. And so they were talking to the clerk in the store and the clerk told them that they needed to talk to Amanda. Now that is pretty awesome that you can get somebody in a health food store to recommend you. What really makes it awesome is this health food store was in England. And somehow, we have no idea who this clerk was, but somehow that clerk knew enough about her, this is what you really want, knew enough about what she did to refer her. And the only place you find Amanda is Twitter and Facebook. So he must have been a follower that we would not even have known or she, well, I guess it was a he, the clerk, um, was even following. Wasn't maybe necessarily commenting or anything, but was paying attention. And that's the magic that you don't ever want to give up on because you just never know when that's going to happen. So how many here tonight made a new friend? How many of you asked that new friend, are you on Facebook? Yeah. <laughs> Tim, well, Tim and Fran, think you guys kind of know this. <laughs> Tim's real good at, his, at doing his social media marketing. When you make a new friend, don't you want to continue the conversation? Don't you want to know them more? Don't you want to be able to reach out to them more? That's what Facebook personal is for if you're doing business. It's a way of continuing the networking even after this event's over. So I encourage you to do that. If you're not friends with me on Facebook, please do. My name's on the cards here, but y'all know my name. So but I don't turn anybody down that's in this area from being a friend. That way I can invite you to this. I can invite you to other things that I think might be interesting to you. And that's the power of social media. Thank you very much.